got started on everything already, but we're pretty much, uh, we're leaking. Leak a little bit of water down on the floor. You probably can't see it, but we already drained some of the water just because it just takes two seconds to pull the plug out. Uh, and then we're, it looks like it's coming from this area down low. So there's some oil that's definitely coming from up here. So we're going to take the valve cover off, go through all that again. But uh, specifically for this, because I don't think there's a gasket here. I think it's just a, this is the, I think it's just RTV. This is the gasket that's supposed to be there. But uh, yeah, I just used RTV because I've used RTV in the past and it never had an issue, but we're going to go ahead and just throw in uh, an actual gasket, seal it back up and hope for the best. If not, and it doesn't work, well, we have another water pump. We have, yeah, so we have another water pump, so we'll try it out. If worst case scenario, that doesn't work well, but hopefully not, and we don't have to take it apart again. Let's get started, shall we? All right, got everything popped off. Just took the bolt out, hit it with a hammer. Usual stuff, so we'll pry this out, get it cleaned up as best we can, and then from there we will, yeah, keep moving. Keep moving the rest of it. I think I need to take this off further back that way just so I can get the whole thing off, but... I'm gonna try and avoid taking the whole thing off because I don't wanna have to take this off for the end line, all this other stuff. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so we got the whole thing replaced out. Got a new gasket on it, should be good. Uh, now we're gonna make our hard lines for the turbo itself to hopefully prevent cooking any of the other lines. Um, really it's gonna be for the oil line mainly just because it sits so close to the turbo. Coolant lines I'm not like super worried about, but we're gonna do it anyway, just to do it. And then we'll clean up all this extra oil that's coming from our valve cover gasket, because again, this is cracked. So maybe I'll send uh, my other one out to, to NAP, NAP and Motorsports, just to knock it out. It's gonna take me some while to figure out the welding situation, so might as well get it going, so that way I don't have to worry about this continuously leaking oil forever and always. So let's get going on this, shall we? All right, we got all of our soft lines off for oil and coolant. If you have a 1.6, then you may know already that you can just use the existing location. Let me see if I can get a light in here. Okay, much better. So uh, 1.6 poise, you know that you can use this. Black one is the coolant, it's dash six. Other one is a dash four for the oil. So that way you don't have to go anywhere else. Just use it right on the side of the block. But Besides all that, um, yeah, now we can start working on getting our hard lines in line. So that way it'll look similar, not similar, but it'll at least be hard lines. Uh, so I don't have to worry about melting, which is kind of the biggest thing, especially if I'm gonna actively take this on track. But like I said, uh, I wanna get a seat time car first so I can really get some real seat time in. Um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. But now we can get this, we'll get back on the vice over there so we can get everything started and go from there. All right, cool. So we have our hard line, which is all aluminum. This is so we can actually, does this have any of the stuff on there? No, I think this is one fourth and then this is one eighth. Uh, the one eighth is for the oil. So we have our slip on fittings for all that stuff. We will use the same thing we used before for our brake lines to form these and turn them and bend them and then flare them out on the end. Uh, again, these are dash 37 because the end is the dash 37 uh, for the degree that the bends or the uh, flare needs to come out at in order for these to seal and work properly. So now that we have all that, we will get our vise set up with the magic. And just like that, we have it set up. All right, cool. So this is a ABN Auto Body Professional brake line flaring tool. Works for anything that needs flaring pretty much. All these are 37 degrees. Just depends on which size uh, line that you have. So we're using one fourth. So we will basically get this set up in here again. Stand by. Now we have it set up. You basically just push it all the way to the far back, as far back as it'll go, because it won't go any further. And then we're gonna start with OP0 to put our hose, our line in here to basically center it and make sure it's pushed right back to where it needs to be on here. We will flip this to, do, 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 since we're using one fourth, OP1, do the first flare, and then we will switch it to OP2, which I should have just went backwards, uh, to the other side. And then that should end the flare itself. We just gotta always remember to put these on before we finish the last flare, just so we can actually fit them up and everything. But um, yeah, let's just measure the lines and see what we can work with. So I'm just gonna start with basically measuring how long this is. I'm gonna make it definitely shorter because this is all over the place. So, but the good news is uh, we're gonna try it out, bend everything up, see if it works. And we have plenty of line. If it doesn't, first try. We gotta make two lines, so let's get to it. One fourth, I don't know why I said that, uh, three eighths. 
three eighths is what we're dealing with here. One fourth is not anywhere near big enough. That's probably for this. Is what I meant for one fourth, but three eighths. And then this is our. Let's back it up a little bit here. This is our professional fitting here. Super professional because I did it in a professional thing, but I don't know what I'm doing half the time. So professional it is. So uh, yeah, so we have this. So now we need to, to basically cut this to length wherever we think that that's going to be. Slip these on on one of these uh, for both sides and then crimp the other side and then bend it up and see where we're at. And if I haven't said it before, both of these are aluminum. So that way uh, it shouldn't rust, shouldn't have any concerns with that, should last a while, a while and uh, do good with heat. So yeah, that's why we're using aluminum. And it bends a lot easier than <laughs> steel. Ask me how I know. And if you've never put these on before, again, make sure you don't flare it before. You slide these on, at least don't flare the other end until you slide everything on, but put this fitting on first. As you can see, it sits pretty close up against that. So that should prevent any leaks. Works really well for brake lines, so it should work the same for coolant. And then you put the actual fitting part on it, slides up, bada bing, bada boom. So now you have a hard line. So now I need to finish this, putting on the rest of it, and then we will bend it up and uh, flare it out. All right, now that we have everything flared out, it's sitting on there nice and pretty, we can, oh my gosh, just focus for a second on your life. Uh, now, when it comes to actually bending it, make sure that you actually bend it accordingly. What I mean by that is just simply making sure this is on the end when you bend it. That way, if you bend it and this black piece is way back here, it's not gonna go around a turn or a bend or anything. So make sure it's all the way at the end, bend it, and then put it where you're going. All right, so we basically have to go through the process of bending some, some uh, aluminum wire. This is really, really tight, so I'm gonna try and get another fitting to come off this way, so then I can just make it a 90 degree angle and make that work out pretty well. But aside from that, um, we're going with banjo fittings this time around, so that way we don't have to fight as much to try and tighten these because they're it's just too tight in here. You have to take one of these off in order to make it super tight, I guess, just so you don't have to worry about leaking. So we'll just be switching to banjos for both, the coolant and for the oil. And uh, yeah, just getting all the old stuff off real quick, throw the new stuff on. So if you ever do two first instead of one, this is what will happen. Oh, come on, come on. It will just rip. So we'll cut that off, do it again, but Make sure you do one first and then do two, so that way you can properly get this out there. Just work with the wise. All right, so we're gonna get this put on turbo. We just kind of eyeball it from where we're at here, bend it down, bend it to the right, and go straight over. So hopefully it works as well, because I only have one piece. The other piece is too small. So this is gonna work one way or another. Well, we got good news and bad news. Good news is the coolant lines look like they'll probably work out. I haven't gotten them in yet, but they at least line up and fit. Uh, these fits the edge of these like they're supposed to, but oil feed, which is dash four, uh, doesn't really agree with that, which is interesting. Uh, this is dash four, the silver piece itself. I've tested with other dash four items. It's just this that does not seem to line up with anything dash four, um, this side or the other side. So I'm gonna start the car up real quick just to see if it's leaking. Uh, coolant, I'm not too worried about. It's gonna fix the coolant, but uh, if it has any oil in it, which it does, it will leak from there. And then we can see if this is gonna work or if we just need to go back to what we were doing before. Staying corrected. It's not leaking. Cool. Let's keep it moving. We'll get the coolant lines done and then we'll be good to go. All right, so we've been putting everything together, pretty much going through the motions of uh, making our pieces. So we now have our coolant line, which is going to go right here when the other one shows up. Probably rotate this downward a little bit, which aluminum is very easy to twist, so we're nice there. Oil doesn't leak and it's 
not touching anything. It's just close to everything, so no big deal. Should be good to go there. That's smooth all the way back over there. And then the newest hard line we just made, which we've made like, like four of them, um, is pretty much gonna go straight underneath, diagonal a little to the right, and then angle straight over. So this should work just fine. Once we get our pieces, we should be good. All right, so we got our 90 degrees, 6 a.m. fittings. Uh, supposedly good yesterday. Uh, basically got nothing in the mail. Uh, the package showed up, it was sealed, but nothing was in it. So finally got these today, day late, no big deal. Unfortunately, it extends so far out that I need to make a new line here for this portion. So cut that off, cutting it off and getting it going. And then we're gonna test the other side real quick while we can, before I need to make another line. All right, started filling everything up. Pretty much got a little leak that's happening right here just because this piece will not stay on. Other side seems to be okay, just that one side. So we're gonna go back to our original, yes, our original lines. We'll take these out, at least for this one side. If the other side's doing okay, we'll leave it, but if not, then we'll take that out too. And then we'll put it back, unfortunately. Seems like at least the oil line's holding up for now. We'll see if that holds too, but we'll take all the lines with us in case we need it. It's not gonna stop real quick. Like that, that's gonna end it for this one. So we'll keep going on the next side and then you'll see that in the next video. But otherwise, appreciate you watching. Appreciate you for sticking around. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like, comment, do all the things. I will catch you on the next one, man. Peace.